Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I hope you've had a wonderful Monday. Um, and in today's video, this is part five of the series. Um, if you've not been following along to any of the previous videos or how we've got to the point where, where we are going to be looking at the stuff today, um, please f check out the videos of, that I'm pr gonna provide the links to in the description below, um, parts one to four. Um, they'll all be in the description and the link to the final project will be in the description as well as how to ac get access keys to the developer APIs, uh, the Marvel developer APIs. So check it all out in the description. Everything will be in there. So um, if you'd like to follow along. Um, so in today's video, we're gonna look at um, actually binding our master to our detail view. So if we take a look at the finished article of what we're trying to achieve. So we want, in today's video, we want to do something where we tap a cell and we present a, um, a detail view. So sliding in and, and going backwards and forwards. So very simple stuff and looking at how we pass the data from one to the other. So, so that we get this profile image, the character bio is actually populated and we'll probably look at um, loading in the comics in, in another video um, as I wanna focus on trying to do some of this animation like this spring effect so that we go through to our, our detail view. So if you remember in one of the previous videos, we had actually started building out this detail view, but just providing it with some dummy data. So if you build and run now, we can actually um, see that we just have a <coughs> detail view that this back button doesn't do anything. And we just have a table view, which consists of three sections and a horizontal scrolling collection view with some custom cells. That's all it, that's all it is. Um, and since um, part, um, since the previous video, I have made one slight change and that's in our data source. If we head on over to our data source and in the, um, in our hero collection view cell, we have this function called set data. If we go into that there, I've changed this option from the previous one, which was from loader only, to be continue in the background. So basically what that's doing is when we make the request to get all our data, obviously our data source is rendering the cells as we go. So what that's doing is actually continuously loading the date, the images in the background so that we don't get these big white squares and we skip, skip the images being rendered. And it's actually it's, it's a performance thing as well because it caches the images better. So I've just made that slight change. You can find in my project, you can find that on line 80 or, um, and um, yeah, that's, um, that's the only change that I've made. So we're gonna use continuing background. So um, one thing we need to change is in our scene delegate, we need to get rid of this line uh, 25 and bring back in our home um, view controller uh, and uncomment line 24. So our root controller, root view controller, sorry, is now um, looking, pointing to home rather than the detail view. So if we build and run that, we should see that um, our, our collection view is uh, back and we have our, our list of characters. So yeah, as you can see, our image is all preloaded and it's nice and fluid. So now let's focus on getting this, this um, these cells pop, um, actually doing something. So if we head into our home presentation.swift file, we're going to inherit now from NS object and one of the things we need is UI collection view delegate. <coughs> and then press enter a few times, make some space, and we're gonna put comment in, or mark, prag mark in, uh, and it's gonna be called collection view delegate, delegate. And then one of the delegate methods we need to get access to is this did select item uh, index path. 
but for now we're just going to do print um, item oh sorry index path index path dot item and if we build and run now we should see that uh, a number appear in the um, in the console let me just get rid of this print uh, on line 43 so now when we when we're tapping the cell and we will actually be printing a number to to the to the console so oh no I need to I need to um, very important you need to um, set your delegate method your collection view delegate so under our collection view dot data source we're going to do collection view dot delegate equals self and if we rerun that we will see the numbers. There you go, zero, one, two, three, and so on and so on. So now, one of the things we need to kind of steal is our, this line here. So in our, um, data source our home dot home data source dot swift file the data source that handles the collection view our home collection view um, we're going to steal this line that's on on in my project at line 33 we're going to steal that and we're going to copy and paste that into there and we just need to add an additional data source like that and then if we print out um, if we do character dot whoops dot name and then just because that's an optional we'll just pr if if that returns if that returns um, nil then we'll just have an empty string and it's just so that we don't get a warning there um, but yeah now as we click each cell we should see the top one 3d man um, and so on and so on we should see the name get printed out as we're selecting the cell so 3d man a bomb aim um, and and so on and so on so that's that's cool so we'll get rid of that and now we need to get uh, let detail vc equals character series just started on my phone which I have no idea why um, so yeah we initialize our character view uh, our character detail view calling it detail view and then in that we'll just do a controller controller dot navigation controller dot push so we're going to push onto the navigation stack and then when we hit the back button we'll pop off the stack um, detail view and then make that true like that whoops and then if we build and run that we should actually go through to our um, detail view obviously it's got no data in there but we should just get through to that and then when we hit the back button but that back button will come back to our our home screen so we do that excellent slide back in back so yeah that's 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 good so now we need to look at passing the data to the top two sections so that our um, our name is um, I need a hero is actually um, populated with a name and our character bio is actually populated with some real world text rather than the dummy text we've got in there. We still will have a blue circle though because we didn't implement the image view on top of that layer. But we can do that in this video as well. So, um, yes, we are now going to go to our character detail view controller and we're going to create a um, reference variable called character, like so. And that's going to be a character, and that's an optional. And then in here, we will, in our detail, now we'll, now we'll have. Um, our detail view will have reference um, access to that reference variable character so we may just have to build because I've found that Xcode does not 
always play nicely when I'm adding extra variables. So oh, there you go. Detail view dot character, and then we're going to pass in our character that we are getting from our array on line fifty five. So we should get that warning go away, which is cool. And then in our character detail view, we'll have access to our. Um, we'll have this reference variable here. So to for that to be in our um, data source, we're going to have to go to our character detail presentation. And then we can do something like um, in our data source, detail data source, we'll have another weak, um, We'll, ha we'll not weak, sorry, we'll have another reference variable called character. And this is going to be another optional character, like so. And then in our, um, this is as, and this is going to be, I can't remember what I named these cells now, so we're just going to cheat and say hero profile table view cell. And this is going to be as uh, character bio table view cell, like so. And We'll leave the comics one for now. We'll, if we get time, we'll focus. Um, we'll f just focus on the top two sections. So now, if we go to um, where did I get to? That's the presentation. Then in here, we can do something like data source. Data source dot character. Let's did I actually name it? I think it did. Yes, we do have it there. Okay, so it's for some reason it's not picking it up. Character equals controller dot character. So literally the two we're just the two reference variables we've got from our view controller and our data source, because we have access to our um our controller through this weak variable up here, we can actually um, pass it through to our data source. So now if we build and run, we should have no issues and everything should be fine. We won't obviously see the data because we haven't set it in our cells, but we've made some changes. So just to make sure that everything is, is correct, we will do we just, I'm just building and run, running, make sure it's all okay, which it is. So now we need to go to <coughs> um, cell, and we can rather than doing a set data function because we only have one property in, um, we're only going to have one property that we want to access. No, actually, we will do a set data function. So in here, we will do a um, down the bottom here we'll do a mark and call it helpers and then we'll do func set data and this is going to take in a character and a character optional like um, our, in our data source the character is a reference variable and is optional so here we need to do name of hero dot text equals character character dot name and um, that's all we need to do for that one. Um, so in here we do cell dot set. Um, yeah, it's not picking it up. Build it. Cell dot set. Thank you. And this is going to be character, which is going to be our reference variable from above. So now if we build and run that, we should see 
when we select our character, we should see it populate with a name, unless I've done something wrong. There you go, 3D man. Excellent, so if we go down to our next one, a bomb. Um, so yeah, that's cool. Then in our um, bio, table view cell, we are going to um, do the same. We're going to um, create a comment mark helper and then do func set data uh, character and then uh, it's going to be character whoops character is an optional and this one just takes a one parameter so and uh, not parameter sorry this takes just one this is uh, all this holds is our is our bio of the of the character so but there's um marvel don't always send us a a, a character bio so we need to handle that but we'll just get um we'll just get a um <coughs> Um, get it up and running for now. So we have uh, bio dot text equals character character dot uh, description. So if we also do a print statement, uh, this is our description and do um, character dot description you'll see that on some of these we'll, we'll have an empty string so we can actually do a check and set our bio text based on whether we've got a string um, a populated string or an empty string so we could just say if there's an empty string we will um, populate with a um we'll populate with a um uh, a default text and i'm not calling set data that's why we don't see anything at all so in our um data source we need to do uh, in this one in section one we need to do cell dot set data and pass in our character <coughs> There you go. So this is our description and it's an empty string. So we could do something like, um, uh, if we go into our, this one, in our, into our character bio table view cell, we could do if uh, character, character dot description equals empty string, then just do bio text bio dot dot text equals uh, no actually I'm going to put this in our constants file so up here do uh, let um, default bio text equals this character doesn't have in a bio and then we can just copy that and paste that in to there and then finish it off with else and move that line into the between the bra uh, the curly braces of the else and just to tie it up we'll move that over and then if we build and run we should on the first character we should see a default bio text and on um, we'll try and find a character that actually passes the bio text to the um, to the detail view. So if we do that, this character doesn't have a bio, as you can see there, and it's like a thin cell. So if we check this guy out here, he's got um, 
uh, he has got a bio and the cell's dynamic, so it's grown in height. So um, that's how we were, when we've said in our constraints, we set the content view to the bottom of the label, the content view bottom to the bottom of the label. It allows us to grow the cell dynamically. Um, yeah, if you want to find out more about that, watch the watch um, one of the previous videos. Um, so yeah, that's that. So to get the, we'll focus on getting the um, image view up and running. So in our image view, we need to do um, the, um, we need to add to our container. So we'll make some room here. We'll do a container dot add sub view and the name of our image so it's name of hero name of hero uh, what I'm talking about is profile image name of hero is a label um, and then we'll do uh, profile profile image dot leading anchor dot constant air constraint equal to container dot leading is active is active equals true and then our good old friend copy and paste for the other three trailing top and bottom uh, trailing top whoops top and bottom Wonderful, and then I think that's everything we need. And then we just need to set the set the image in in the um, in here. So the character image is a URL, isn't it? Thumbnail. So we need to do something similar to how we um, render it in the actual collection view. We could be clever and pass in an image but just for speed we're going to do exactly the same so we'll get um, we'll do a uh, guard guard let um, image uh, we'll do path um, equals uh, character character dot thumbnail dot path and then we'll also do um, let ext equals character dot thumbnail dot uh, ext and then we'll do else return then here we can do um, name um, profile image dot sd image um, and then we will oh we need to build our URL up first so that's going to be let URL equals URL and then we have an initializer that takes in a string parameter and this is going to be um, path whoops path and then dot extension so that will be the the URL path and then the dot JPEG and then unwrap that force unwrap that and then we pass in the URL we won't have a placeholder image for now um, and like I said we'll do continue in background and then our context is going to be nil as well 
So now, if we have done everything right, we should see our profile image get populated now when we move into our detail section. <coughs> There you go. Cool. So that is how we how we're passing um, how we're passing our our data between the view controllers. The the comics we're actually going to have to make a an additional request because we have to if we go to um, if we if I just pull up the developer um, Marvel website. So once that's loaded, if we go to their interactive documentation, the actual, um, when it loads, the actual um, uh, API endpoint that we're gonna call is this uh, comics. So one of the things we're gonna have to pass in is the actual character ID. So um, yeah, that's, we'll, but we'll look at that in another video because there's a little bit of networking involved with that as well. It's not really UI stuff. Well, it kind of is and kind of isn't, but we'll, we'll cover that in, a, in another video. One of the things I did want to, I did want to cover is the, um, is the animation stuff. Um, so if we head back to our um, finished article of the app, whoops. So if we head back to this one here, one of the things I did want to cover is this this springy animation that we have. So um, it, the way I'm going, I intend to do it is just to build an extension um, that will um, uh, allow us to do that to do that animation. So if we head on over to our extensions folder and we do Command N, a new Swift file. And we call it UI view extension and create that. Uh, import UI kit extension uh, UI view. And then <coughs> from here, we can build out our, um, our, our function that's going to ha handle our. Um, our, that spring animation and we can also in here we can also do our drop shadow function as well which we can apply to our any any view basically so a collection view cell or a table view cell or or the um, as you can see in our character detail section the actual drop shadow of the of the character our label has a drop shadow this button has a drop shadow so we can apply all those by just calling one function and and that, that's it so um, to do that um, if we focus on the animation button press so to do that we're going to do funk animate button and the mate button press and that doesn't take anything doesn't return anything and and all we need to do is UI view and then one of the view uh, in UI view we have a animate closure and it's animate with duration um, and we're going to do 0 0.2 seconds on that and then part of the animation um, is a closure so we're going to do call self dot transform uh, equals C A G uh, no sorry C G A F that's the one I want um, and then we need to do there's a scale yes and then that's going to be 0 0.9 and this one can be 0 0.9 and you can play around with these these are all different parameters and they'll give you different results and stuff like that so um, yeah, they're quite they're quite fun to play around with, um, and we need a completion here as well. Shun uh, colon boom boom, and then we need to do underscore in like that, and then finally we'll do do the inverse of that. Why is it complaining? Actually, let's just write that out again and get the completion handler. It'd be easier. UI view dot animate oh come on animate I'll do this use this one 
animations and then get this line here paste that in and then in here in our completion oops in our completion we need to do um, UI view dot animate and do the reverse of what as what we've just done there so in we're going to do 0 0.2 and then in here we can do um, self self dot transform equals c a c g a dot identity there you go that's it and that's all we need and just get rid of that block there oh yeah forgot this oops like so and that should stop that error and it does cool so now if we go to our did select item at index path which was in our um home presentation we have this one here we're gonna have to um do a little bit of um alterations to the code so we need to do this dispatch uh q dot async after this one here why is that doing that dispatch no, ace async after there you go and then we need to do now uh, is it dot now yep dot now plus 0.5 so it just puts basically this this dispatch queue I think after just puts a short delay on everything so we can do something like uh, is that what I need dot main yes that's the one that yeah um, so now what I can do here is we need to also get reference to the cell so we'll do let's sell don't need that one need collection view dot sell for item index path because that's actually trying to access the data sources collection view actually we have a reference to our collection view here so and this is an optional um yeah this this here this this section here is actually giving us a reference to our collection view so we don't have to go and find it we can just say oh we want our collection view that we've set our so we've set our um, delegate against. So in this instance, we've said self. So we, yeah, we don't have to go out looking for it, yeah. So now we should see our animated button press. Fingers crossed, he says. There you go, cool. So you get the animate and then we slide off. And like I say, you can tweak these values here and in our animate button press you can see um, you can actually change the, the the scale so you can like do some really wacky animations um, so if we made that like 0.2 it would be a lot quicker so you get the transition and then boom you wouldn't have like um, as much a delay so yeah play around with these values and see what you can create it's, it's quite cool there you go so it's not so much of a delay um, we'll reset that back to 0.5 so that's that bit done um and then one last bit before we end close this close this video is we're gonna do our um drop shadow so um if we go to uh funk apply drop shad shadow and um, we're going to take in a um, a color in this one shadow color and it's going to be of type ui color and the reason we're going to pass in a color is because i may look at doing a dark mode in 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 this particular app um not sure yet um we may save the dark mode stuff to another another lesson but we'll we'll see but yeah just in case we do we'll pass in the shad uh, the shadow color we want depending on the the dark the the dark mode whether in light or dark mode so to get our um to get our drop shadow we need to do self dot layer whoops self dot layer 
uh, dot mask to bounds equals false and then here basically um, we're going to have some rasterization and, and stuff like that so the whole ra rasterization basically means because we're going to be scrolling over this collection view and our, our comic book view if you've got loads of data the rasterization just basically means that you can cache stuff um, and we'll there'll be the last couple of lines of code that we'll write but um, be set now we need to um, set our shadow opacity so self dot um, layer dot shadow opacity um, is equal to 0 0.63 go with that maybe 0 0.6 0 0.6 and then um, we also need to set our shadow radius again these are all values that you can play with you, you don't have to copy what I'm doing it's uh, you can you can do um, you can play around with it and, and make up your own drop shadow and stuff like that um, so we've got our shadow radius and then we do dot layer dot um, shadow offset equals and this is a CG point um, no it's not it's a CG size CG size um, and then again you don't they don't have to be any specific values they can be whatever you want um, to we go with that and then self dot self dot layer dot um, should uh, should rasterize equals true um, and then self dot self dot layer dot um, rasterization scale equals UI screen dot main dot scale so basically that's saying that these two these two lines here 27 and 28 are saying we want to cache we because it's expensive and we uh, potentially we could scroll forever not forever but a lot of data because it's expensive we want to cache the shadow and to stop the um the the shadow being pixelated we actually set the rasterization scale to the scale of the screen. So obviously you've got iOS. If you were doing this on an iPad, the scale of the screen is different from like an um, like iPhone um, XS, you know. So um, yeah, it's just, um, yeah, it's just to help with the, the scaling and stop it from pixelating. Uh, one other thing I have forgot to do is actually set the color that we're going to pass it in. So we do shadow color dot layer dot um, self dot layer dot shadow color equals shadow color, and because this is of type CG color, we have to just do dot, and then we'll get CG color, and that should be everything we need to apply our drop shadow. So now it's just a case of going through the app and applying it to the, the bits that we need. So to start with, we can do um, in our in our cell, we can do here, we can do content view dot apply drop shadow and do dot black. And if we build and run that, we should, in theory, see a um, a slight shadow on the, on the collection view cell. There you go. And it might be a little difficult for you to see, but there is there is a slight shadow. If I was to comment this line out and build and run it again, it should just be a, a, a white. Um, you you won't see any sort of like depth of depth of field on on the cell. So yeah, as you can see, there's not really a, a not really a drop shadow. But like you can you can play around with those values that I've mentioned in here to 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 make make it look different. So if I build and run that again, you'll see you'll see the drop shadow. Um, and then in our navigation controller, we have this title. A UI label which is a inheritance from UI view so we can use it here so we can do title dot apply 
drop shadow and do dot dot black and then this should um, take in effect both the master and the detail view <coughs> so you should be able to notice it more on the on the title yeah so as you can see it's got a slight glow or um, a drop shadow around the outside and if we drill down as you can tell there is a drop shadow on the word character detail but the button you can clearly see that there's no there's no drop shadow so we can apply that on the on the button as well so we do back button dot apply drop shadow dot black and build and run and then you'll see the the back button has the has the um, the drop shadow as well and then just one couple of final bits to do is the the comic book the comic books when we come to collect that data so that that's got drop shadow on it and um, we can apply drop shadow to our um, profile view um, in the character detail section so that's just as simple as going to our hero profile and finding our profile image and then do image dot apply drop shadow dot black and that will that should be everything we can do for now um, get rid of that yellow background color don't need that anymore can we drill in has that applied it difficult to see I can't difficult to see in the simulator I think it has if not we can move it down to oh no I'm doing it in the wrong bit and it needs to be on the container view that was the whole point of us putting the container view in was so that you can apply that you can actually see it better on the container view you wouldn't yeah, if it's if it's nested in the container view, you won't actually see it because the container view has got the clip to bounds on it. Of course, um, if we now look at it, you should be able to see our, and that's gone square. But we need to do um, image dot clip clip to bounds equals true as well. Um, yeah, that's the whole that was the whole purpose behind it, so that we can. Uh, um, I need to also move that into there as well. Get rid of that background colour, don't need that anymore. There you go, and you can see his drop shadow. Yeah, we applied it to the view so that it gave us a more uh, a, a better looking better looking depth. But yeah, that's um, we just needed to add these two lines here. So set the corner radius of the image view and clip to bounds to true. Um, but yeah, everything else is pretty much where we want to be with our um, our uh, our app at the moment. You could we could go to the extent of putting it on the cell in here. So if we go into our set data and then apply it to our comic, not our bio label, this one here, probably here. Yeah. So we could do um, comic image. It's probably better to do it in here. So to cover dot apply drop shadow dot black and then our title do exactly the same title dot apply drop shadow dot black <coughs> build and run and hopefully we should see a slight drop shadow on our on our label and a slight drop shadow on our comic our placeholders for where our comic books are going to go. like that so they've they've got a slight drop shadow on the text and around there and we, you could even put it on the on the label of the 
of the character bio as well. Um, is is that simple of just calling that apply drop shadow and passing in the color that you want? Um, where's where do we? It's in our our presentation. There should be a delegate method here. Yeah, so just do title dot apply drop shadow dot black. Oops, black. And build and run, and that that will be it. And then literally the missing part is just making that foot additional request to Marvel to get the comic books and adding um activity indicator in the in the center, um, and stuff like that. So yeah, we've got a slight drop shadow on our on our titles now. Um, our back button and and and, it, and that's pretty much all we're going to cover today whoops um but yeah that's hopefully that's that's been a, a good lesson for everyone um and we've covered a fair decent amount of stuff so in today's lesson it was just a case of just connecting our master detail up with our um a master up with our character detail view we've also added uh, a new ui view extension that populates our um that um allows us to apply a drop shadow and um a um a springy effect animation to our to our button and and we're we're really close to finishing this now um so yeah it's um we're nearly there but I um if like I've said in all my previous videos if anyone has any questions people have come to me and asked me questions and I am really enjoying answering them um if you have any questions if you've um if I've not covered anything that you think I've not made clear or I could make clearer please don't hesitate um and but to get in touch with me um and um yeah we like I say we're almost there um and I will see you in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe um, and I'll see you in the next video.